fields. And I put that on this poison list. So this is put on the index, so to speak. <coughs> it's not only that I want to repeat processing that message. It's also that I don't want to be bombarded by such a poisonous message, which would then actually block my system. Because that would be this would very often uh, executed attack against systems, sending messages to somebody and then crashing. I want to be safe from that. Therefore, I just marked that message on my poison list. This is a message that would is possibly crashing me. It once did. It will, it will again. So, and I will refuse processing these messages. So if then a message occurs next time I read it, this message or another message coming in, I will first look into the poison list and find out, did I already process a message like this? If I did, I will refuse processing and just drop that message and stop my transaction. If it's not on the point of this, I try. If it works, fine. If it actually throws me an error at me that is not repeatable, it goes into the poison list. If it's a repeatable error, it just goes onto the, into the entry queue again. And so I shield myself from being, or I have, have to process, having to process messages that cause me to fail. I have to make sure that nobody else can get my system down. Do you let the sender know that you discarded the message? All right. Do you let the sender know that you treated their message as No. Business? I wouldn't do that. It just depends. You can do this maybe once, for example, and mark, yes, I did this once. But if you get these messages all over, there is a, uh, yeah, a very likely a case that somebody tries to fool you. If this is just by accident, or somebody has sent me a malformed message or whatever that caused me to die or fail, <coughs> I can send one time a message back if I can actually find out that it works. But I can still then, in my poison queue, mark that I have already done this, and next time I will not do this. Because obviously this only work for me, and I don't want to do that work on somebody else's behalf. So, I think that's it, a little bit over time, but it's his fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any more questions? Are you basically saying that we need to repeat, after we've solved the two-phase commit problem once in the single system and once in distributed system, now we need to solve it again? Because once we needed to code two-phase commit ourselves, yeah. then Oracle, Microsoft, IBM solved the problem for us a single time. <coughs> then they solved it for us in a distributed system. Now do we need to code it yet again? That is, uh, no, the thing is, sorry. <laughs> um, the thing is, what, where, the, where are these two-phase commit transactions for? Uh, this is a very abstract thing. You try to build a transaction that is not happening in real life, which is always a fault. You should model your system like the real business works. What we try to accomplish with two-phase transactions is something that we rarely do in real life. Uh, could you tell me a single way of transactions that would come close to the notion of two-phase commit transactions. How that in real life? In real life, there are quite a few good examples. Let's say I want to buy a stock only in the case that a different stock goes down. Simple brokering condition. I usually ask the broker to be my resource coordinator. He will do the resource coordination for me, and the brokering firm will take responsibility over the whole transaction. This is a simple two-phase commit transaction. In From your perspective, you may be right. From my perspective, when I go to my travel agent and let him book the, the flight, the hotel, and the car, that's for me one single transaction. Yes. Uh, not From my perspective, how it is actually done 
is a different thing. It still be, uh, is important to note who is involved in that transaction. Is that a strict in-house thing? You would do may, maybe a two-phase commit transaction that these two things actually happen to be in different databases just by accident. Could be one. The, the trade settlement in, in stock trade is not two-phase commit, not at all. Yeah. If you have this, it, it, takes, yeah. it takes three days to settle a trade. Okay. Up to three right. days, yeah. It takes up to three days to settle a trade. Your, your intent to buy means, means your clo your closing of the contract, like the sales contract, may be so. And in 99.999% of all cases, actually you purchasing, purchasing shares actually works but it goes through a whole chain of uh, 9, 10, 12 different organizations that actually aid in, tra in, in settling the trade and there's always um, um, failure involved, possible failure involved and compensation too. You know, there's a custodian bank, there's uh, the, uh, the, su the supervisory uh, council, there's a broker, there's the trader, there's, there's all sorts of different parties involved and all of these can't do, can't cooperate with two-phase commit. Yeah. They don't. They actually do compensation. On and the other hand, if I'll need to do that myself, but on the other hand, if I'll need to do it myself, what I do with a brokering firm, then my problems, the all the, put a oh, message in I will do, my, I will have to deal with the problem. What, if, let's go back to the software problem. I'm just saying that we already need to solve problems that were solved before for us. No, 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 they weren't. Yeah. That's the thing, they were not. What's solved for you is that if you update four resources that are local mm -hmm. or reasonable local at the same time, you can make that reasonable consistent. As, as soon as you roll someone in who you don't trust to lock your database records, which is by default nobody, right? You can't do two-phase commitment, impossible. So you have to res uh, resort to uh, a different strategy, and that is, Unfortunately, just a matter of life in distributed systems programming, right? The vendors can come around, can help you. BizTalk, for instance, does that uh, in, in a limited way with compensating transactions, but uh, that's, that's so. That is something you need to fix, right? It's your job. Unfortunately. 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 You have to think about, see, that's one of the fun is in distributed systems, thinking about failure. That is a very, very cool thing. Everything working is boring. <laughs> Stuff going bad, that's cool. I <laughs> think. Yes. Two things, two samples that you, we always discuss in this uh, area here is one is being a marriage, where you have the couple stepping up, the Pope, the priest, whoever it is, and uh, the, this guy then, this transaction coordinator, asks first one, do you, do you, do you want to marry this wife, your wife, this one, so on, and then you ask the second one, and we both have said yes, then the thing is settled. That's a kind of two-phase commit transaction. But now you have somebody from the outside who can say no. <laughs> <laughs> For example, no, that's you should just have bought. That's, that's okay, but that's still that's a two-phase commit transaction, <laughs> which makes the things interesting. <laughs> It wouldn't be that necessary to do that if this possibility wouldn't happen uh, from time to time. That is, by the way, that, that by the way, would be called in transaction. That's a, a vote injection attack. <laughs> <laughs> but given that sample, you say that's real life. Two phase commit transaction happen in real life. Um, yes, if everything is more or less local, belonging together, you have these two phase commit transactions. Coming back to the thing that we talked about here, the services that are connected here and bridged using transactions. And talking about a marriage, uh, sorry, but these two people are just giving up their autonomy. That's what they do. So they are closely related. Uh, that's the one sample. Uh, the other sample is, at least in Germany, if you want to buy a house. Uh, if you want to buy a car, for example, a uh, Rolls Royce or a Maybach or whatever, you can have your, um, your, your suitcase with you with a million euros to buy a car, and this is just done over the desk. If you buy a house, which is much cheaper than Maybach, uh, usually, uh, 
That takes you at least six weeks to do that. Because there's a notary uh, attorney involved, there's the banks involved, uh, and there is the public authorities involved. And this is actually done really in a two-phase committee way. But it takes you ages to do that. That's why it is not really usually done in normal things. If we do business with uh, remote <coughs> places like uh, whatever that may be, or Madagascar or whatever, um, we have an accredited account at some bank that we trust where they send the money first, then we go there, and then we pull the money from the bank and we return. Two-phase commit transaction, so to speak. But what an effort. You, in real life, day-to-day -day business, you don't do that. Unless it is really necessary. Because the effort is so high. Any more questions? Okay. Yeah, then we'll have another seven minutes break until 11. Uh, no, let's make another. Yeah, so make a seven minutes break. Okay. <coughs>